two, one, two, three, four. Those vegan guys. I thank you. Hello, you wonderful people. Uh, great to be back with you. I am. I've got so much to talk about today. Um, because I've had a couple of really interesting self-revelations recently which I think are important to talk about regarding diet and mental health and with it just kind of being, you know, we're just out of uh, Mental Health Awareness Week but um, that's not a, 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 a sign to stop being aware, is it, of mental health. So, <clears throat> if... Uh, if I, if I title this video as it's in my head now, it's going to be um, Anxiety, Me and CBT Taking Advice from Future Me And there's a very specific reason for that title Because a trick that I um, developed, I suppose During my CBT during my CBT treatment after the horror um, and if you're new to the world of those vegan guys and you've got no idea what I'm talking about and you're watching this either on your phone or on YouTube there will be a little grey circle up there with an eye in it um, you might want to watch that b video first before uh, we uh, before you continue on this journey with me um, so you, you already know about the aura, uh, uh, I'm assuming, and uh, I won't go into too much of those uh, details again, but during my CBT, um, which I requested uh, because I went to see my doctor um, regarding the, uh, the anxiety and the panic attacks, and uh, do you know what she said? Do you know what the first thing is that she said to me? Would you like some antidepressants? I said no, I, I, I didn't even mention the word depressed. Um, although that was definitely a part of it, but I hadn't, you know, kind of mentioned that word. Anyway, uh, I did, uh, I got referred uh, through to a local uh, agency um, in my case, it was Healthy Minds in Oldham. Um, although I also got uh, kind of registered myself with Mind, and and it just so happened at that point in time that Healthy Minds came through first with an with an appointment. So I'm having this CBT, and it's really really good. And you, but you really do have to take an active role in <clears throat> any kind of talking therapy because of course it's about talking about it and at the point that I started that um, C those CBT sessions I was still finding it really difficult to talk about the actual event and and what had happened and one of the things that um, stuck in my craw was was that being down on the floor and I couldn't for the life of me fathom what had given was it fear was it what was it that gave me the courage and I don't know why I needed to name it but I did I needed to know what gave me the courage to kick my leg up and be able to sit up because I believe that saved my life um, and then uh, so I'm having the, the treatment and I'm really starting to be able to talk about the event in detail and work through those emotions as I'm talking about it and all that's fine and well and good um, but I still needed to label and I like I say I don't know why um, but I felt that I needed to uh, to be able to say ah that's why I did that that's why I kicked up so this this one on oh, I've been advised throughout the CBT to uh, because I still worked there and saw the um, the key areas that things had happened 
I still saw. Uh, I'd, uh, so I'd been advised to not just walk past them and try not to look at them anymore, but actually look at these places and allow myself to visualise what had happened in the safety that I was here now. Uh, and so that might be where the kind of link started. Anyway, one day I'm at the back door smoking a cigarette at work. Excuse me. Yes, I'm still on my slim fast. I even had one on Saturday for my lunch. Yeah, I didn't on Sunday though. We had a late lunch on Sunday. PTT were round. Um, so I'm at the back door and I'm having a cigarette. And I'm looking, because where you are at the back door, right there on your right hand side on the floor is where I was pinned. So I'm, I'm visualising it all, all of it, all of it. Um, visualising it all, going through the whole kind of process in my head. And then, is the really the strange but powerful bit. I, future Paul, safe at the door, smoking a cigarette, visualising what had happened in the past. When I got to the point where Paul on the floor couldn't breathe and was about to black out, I stood at the back door, shouted, Use your fucking legs! And then burst out crying. <laughs> because I thought, and I know this is not possible, but hey, what if it is? I thought, what if I heard me? What if I just heard me? What if what got me to kick up that night was future safe me shouting back to do exactly what I needed to do to get off that floor and not go unconscious? And it was it that was powerful, really powerful. Anyway, I went to my fourth CBT session and I'm telling her this and we had a really good chat and I was like, yeah, now, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in the same place on, on, on the bus that I used to sit in now because I stopped to start. I, I always sit always upstairs on the bus, second seat away from the top of the stairs, if it's available, always, always had done. After the aura, I started sitting downstairs right at the back. About, you know, having my back vulnerable. <clears throat> um was was why I did that. I didn't want to be vulnerable. Anyway, I did, everything was getting better, much better. And, and so that was a very, very powerful um, key. Now, let's link this back to what's going on today, shall we? We are slim fast and everything. So, last week, as we've discussed, was a very, very powerful week for me. And it was when I kind of got my mental health in order. I've taken an act role in my own recovery again this all sounds really dramatic doesn't it because it's you know um, there are people with far worse far more debilitating mental health issues far I'm fully aware of that I'm not dramatizing I'm like oh, pity me it's not what this is about at all this is about sharing positive experiences that have um, that have had a real positive impact. Hey! Washer's got a real attitude. Um, that have had a real positive impact on negative mental health issues. That's what all this is about. Um, so, last week was all powerful and everything. Blah, 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 blah. And then, over this weekend, this funny thought, thought for, this funny thought, popped into me head a couple of times, mate, and it's funny, thought, sorry, this funny thought has popped into my head a couple of times. Uh, 
and I've got pressed tofu in the fridge and bread over there and I could have easily made a fried egg sandwich but I didn't um. <laughs> so now he's back future Paul only now it's not working backwards like it did last time now actual future Paul who is as fit and healthy as uh, he can be not well not as he can be but do you know what I mean he's who's far fitter and health, healthier than I now who is over all of this employment related as I'm going through at the moment who is churning out great YouTube content and working hard on a beautifully growing channel he has got my back so he's shouting back now come on I'm here Waiting, you've got to get to me. And all you've got to do is what you're doing now. Hurry up, I can't wait to see you. And I'm like, oh, thanks. You're dead nice, you. And he's like, of course I am. I'm you. And I'm like, Where's me slim fast? <laughs> Whether you think I'm crazy or something, I don't know. You might think I'm crazy because of this, right? I've, I've always been a, a, I wrote a play. I've always been a multiple charactered person. I've always had multiple facets. There, there, there have always been multiple parts to my personality. Sometimes I even give them names. I wrote a play about it called every single one of me where I split myself into um, five parts really there was Adam and that was like the, the person the protagonist there was Barbara who was a writer fabulous little writer with very tight bun uh, there was Carl, who was a beer swilling, pool playing lad. There was Deborah, who was very, very homely and liked to cook and clean and blah, 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 blah. And there was Eddie, who was a hippie man, like smoking weed and painting a picture, loving life. Not all played by one person, by the way. This is five, so I played Adam. I uh, did it at college. Uh, and uh, and Adam's best friend Faye, who was very ethereal and mystical and into all the you know crystals and everything. That's basically if you had to break me into six parts. That's pretty much it right there. Um. So yeah, you you know maybe that will click with you, maybe your future you, your visualisation of the person that you aspire to be, that you really want to be, that you are working hard to be, maybe they're already there. And maybe they're shouting stuff back to you. Okay, so you can't audibly hear it, right? We're not talking voices here. Um, but, the, you know, Positive mental games that we play with ourselves can be incredibly healing. They can be entertaining, for goodness sake. Uh, I've carried conversations with myself sometimes. He said, Paul, they see that, love. I know. Rude. Um, so maybe future you is, is shouting back at you right now. Come on. You got this. You've got this. I believe in you. Look, I'm here. You've done it. Just keep doing it until you can say you've done it. Keep doing it until you can say 
You've done it. Paul Burgess. I mean, it's no Maya Angelou. But it's got brevity. That's it. I'll have more of this now. So yeah, the crew came around on Sunday. Um, the, the video ends here for, <laughs> for if you just came for the mental health bit. Um, uh, uh, but if you're a regular, yes, hi. The crew came on Sunday and we chatted about uh, the possible reforming of Pink Triangle Theatre. We all discussed our availability uh, and that the need seems to be right now for that kind of thing and so next steps are that I'm going to be contacting all the schools that we have performed at in the past to see if that is something that they're um, still wanting, needing and um, yeah oh good night mm. big handful of fruit in there again which makes it absolutely delightful um, if you haven't checked out the video that um, I did with my wonderful husband Jason on um, Saturday, please do. It's our top 10 best vegan items from Sainsbury's um, and it was good to be back with the old chap. Um, I said to him today, I'm probably going to do a vlog today and he was like, it's all right, I've made my peace with it, man. You, you do a vlog, I want you to. He didn't, he, although he, he, I mean, he's never been from London. And to be honest with you, he's not great at accents, so probably couldn't be. A, couldn't he could probably do a Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins? Hello, Mary Poppins. <sighs> I think for today, we're going to leave it there. Uh, but I am going to say one more time: try, try this visualization. Try visualizing the future you that has the better job or the thinner waist, or the broader shoulders, or the better health, or the longer hair, whatever, picture them already there, they're already there, they exist, just in the future, they can still shout stuff back to you though, I, I proved it, I did it, I did it myself, I shouted back to the past me, Use your fucking legs. And I used my legs. And I saved my life. And now I've become Catherine Hatman. Sorry. <sighs> Whether your future self, your past self, or your present self, be excellent to yourself. Be excellent to each other. And I'll see you right soon. Lots of love. Would you like a silly face to end this properly? How's that, Karen? <laughs>